what looked like a, mut a mutiny in Russia yesterday appears to have been called off overnight. The mercenary Russian fighting force, the Wagner Group, led by Yevgeny Prigov... Prigozhin. Prigozhin. Prigozhin, mm. that's the one, had already taken over the southern city of Rostov-on-Don and were marching towards Moscow. Yeah, and it, Putin was even said to have fled the Kremlin, mm. and it looked like we could be on the brink of civil war in Russia. But then last night, a deal seems to have been done. It's all very strange. Let's get the lowdown from Robert Fox, defence editor at the Evening Standard, who's here. Good to see you, Robert. What, do we, what do we make of By all By the way, this? can I say a disclaimer? I'm not a rocket science, and I don't do mates rate. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we know that, Robert, we know that. Um, what do you make of it all? It looks a bit of a farce, and was this fixed up? That's a much too Western point of view. Mm -hmm. This is the tale of two real chances, and they've been in it together since Putin rose to power. This is the history lecture. A lot of deep history in the papers. No, you want shallow history. Mm -hmm. It's when they knew that they could grab all kinds of goodies when they were around the mayoralty of Petersburg at the beginning of this century. And Prigozhin and Putin have been buddies. Prigozhin, who'd done jail time, was the caterer. Yeah. And that's how he made his initial uh, fortune with the Concord Catering Company. Yeah, because there were lots of photographs of him... Uh, uh, oh, he's serving. He, he was always known as Putin's Putin. sh chef. Then he started cooking uh, cyber because he got into hacking through a thing called the IRA the Internet Research Agency, oh. very much involved in whatever was going on and not in 2016. But it was a big trial run of really disrupting Western elections at that time. I say no more about that. And he's sort of been around with a bunch of gangsters, but became more and more essential to what Russia was doing in Syria and in Libya, and then started stuffing its pockets, which is where Wagner is now, in West Africa, oh. with Mali and around there. This is important because a lot of money is being talked about. They don't need that much money because they've gone in as guards and security in an unstable situation, uh, gold mines, mineral r resources and oh. so on, and way down. And that's how it works. And what Prigozhin's team will be saying to him, and the gang will be saying, you've got to keep us going as a corporation. Back to what was going on yesterday and before is I think a lot of these people who are were in very serious jail terms for murder and worse, some of them, they wanted to get out of the fighting where they'd had a terrible time in Bakhmut. We, we are not up for the meat grinder anymore and we don't want to go back to jail. That's what they were saying. Oh. If you saw them hanging around the <clears throat> images of Rostov-on-Don, very good place to go because it's where you run the logistics into Ukraine. They didn't look as if they were cooing anything because there were people chatting to them, there were That's people right. taking Welcome, selfies with they? them. I mean, if you're doing a military takeover, wouldn't you build up checkpoints? Wouldn't you have sandbags out of, outside the... Um, uh, 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 the, the vital communication centre and this thing of going on the road. Yes, it was probably a string of about a couple of dozen vehicles, but it wasn't a takeover. And even with 25,000, if they had them, they couldn't have taken over Moscow. No, but, I mean, there is this talk of, I, mean, I don't know whether we believe it or not, of, of Putin going into hiding and all the rest of it. Could this, even though this has ended, could it be destabilising? Putin looked very shaky on the telly yesterday morning, unusually so. Point two, state broadcasting, for once, did not know what to say. Was there going to be a deal? Was Prigozhin going to try and take over in the Kremlin? It was all up in the air. Because I'm saying, th 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 this is the odd couple. It's the, the story of these two go going, going together. And I guess Putin himself if he was half aware, knew that Prigozhin was going to do something, mm. but he didn't know what. And by the way, from the beginning of the week, I think the Western intelligence agencies, certainly US and UK, I was getting very odd noises from various places. They thought something was up, but quite what was up. And it's a vital part of what the strategy is, or the main overall scheme, with the summer offensive in Ukraine. Gosh, what's he talking about? He's gone off on one. 
they know that the Ukrainians can't take back all that much ground. They haven't got the air power, which you need to cover this. But they're, they're doing quite well, and it is really tough. The real test was going to be how much they could disrupt the Russian command and the Russian leadership. And that's what everybody was waiting to see. Who would play into it? They knew the defence minister, Shoigu, was in trouble. They knew the commander-in-chief, who was the commander of operations there, Valery Gerasimov, was in trouble. And, by the way, we haven't seen them in the last uh, really? 20, 24 yeah. hours. So was there a deal over that? What is going on? Is there going to be a renewed attack? And are the Russians going to get out of their defensive uh, positions or are they going to rot and wait for the supply lines to dry up? Because that's what the attack on the bridges is about. So basically, am, by, am by I painting this, the picture yeah, for by, you? By yeah. this sort of show of strength yesterday that, that looked like uh, some sort of coup was being had. Yeah. Um, then that means Prigozhin's men have got what they wanted. They, they're basically out of Ukraine now. Yeah. After taking all of the, the, the hit and doing all of the nasty work as well yeah. Yeah. in Ukraine. And being very nasty. Yeah, being oh. very nasty. Um, they, uh, they've got what they want now, which is free deal. Not, they're not going to go back to Russia to face jail time. Um, in fact, nobody's going to hold them to account. They're going to go off to Belarus and live the Where there will there. be nobby no mates. The Belarus don't like them and they won't want them and things are pretty volatile. You know that you now see uh, Lukashenko, the former meat farmer, looking big and strong f b because for the first time he has had something that Putin wants. And this is, this is a layoff. It's typically Russian. who's a great friend of mine. She's partly Italian. She's a great expert on this area, saying, look, knowing my background, saying, you think of things in Western European terms, mm. Britain, Northern Europe, and you know Italy very well. And she was talking about what the Italians have been saying about it. Everything is a mafia plot to them. Now, my friend said, no, it isn't, because the Russians are far too incompetent now. They don't do it. And there were wonderful reports, I was saying to one of your colleagues just now, on my social media yesterday, that the reason why nobody was moving in Veronese and uh, in Rostov on Don, they couldn't get the police to turn up. They were either hung over, a lot of them, about half of them, or completely drunk still from the Friday night binge. Oh. And, and it is. And Zelensky, he would say it, wouldn't he, the Ukrainian leader? But he's got it about right. There is some sort of extraordinary chaos going on in Russia, but it's unfortunately chaos still with an awful lot of firepower. Mm. Yeah, yes, but with that in mind, because the Wagner Group had done so much, yeah. and as we're saying, done the dirty work, if they're not there now, where does that leave it? Yes, and I think you've got it absolutely nailed. Do the Russian grunts, who've often been forced into the line against their will, do they want to take the place at Bakhmud, Zaporizhia, uh, Advika, all these places that have been coming up on, on our maps. The only thing that they've got with a slight advantage, as I'm sure you've been reporting, is that the Russian attack helicopters, the appropriately named alligators, the, MI, the KA-62s, have been pretty effective. And that's where the Ukrainians are weak. Mm. They do not have local <clears throat> air, uh, air power to protect their frontline forces. But what is extraordinary, given the balance of forces going back, if we go back to February last year, why have the Russian Air Force performed so badly? And they've hardly been used. OK, they've been conserving their, their aircraft. And I wonder if there's some politics in this, because they keep on saying that the man who was in charge and who was the butcher of uh, Aleppo and places like that when the Russians were in Syria, Mr Surovkin, I think that that's who Prigozhin was trying to get put in charge of the operation again. It was his buddy. But latest reports and how reliable they are over the last 48, uh, 72 hours, those two have fallen out. Oh, Christ. And, nice. and, and so, I mean, it is an extraordinary story. But if I could just finish on this, the, the Western governments quite rightly said, we're not going to mix into this, this plot. But they cannot afford to do nothing over the next three or four weeks. They've got to plug the frontline weaknesses of the, of, of the Ukrainians. And they are weak on defending against particularly the helicopters. It's what's called the close air battle. And that's what we have to focus on, because if they can keep going, it's pretty good. They're causing shocks. The bash on the bridge 
with the British yeah. missiles was a shock. Yet another supply line cut off to Crimea and from Crimea into southern Ukraine. We know there's this whole hoo-ha about, about what we're providing in terms of, of air support and what have I mean, It's been a controversial issue. Well, if, if there's an issue with these alligator helicopters, what about SAMs? Are we providing things like yeah, SAMs? Yes, we are. But What's the that? fact that... Uh, Surface-to-air missiles. Oh, yeah, but, but they've got to have a greater range. This is what these helicopters can deal with. The, the, they, they, they can stand back. That, that's the technicality. But I, I really want to take you up on that. It, you're absolutely right. We seem to have put in an awful lot... But it's so uncoordinated, and this is where we have to be critical of the American approach from Biden himself. It's always the right thing, about two steps too late. And this is where the Brits have been on the front foot, because it's the Brits saying, we want longer-range missiles like Storm Shadow, we want tanks. And, OK, there are only 14, 20, actually there are a lot more, I think, there are more than 14 Challenger 2 tanks, but saying, yes, we're going to put them in. At last started everybody doing it, but they're still slow in getting them in there. And the thing that really is the balance is the contest of human power. It's quantity versus quality. The, qu the quantity has been lost on the Russian side the quality is being lost on the, on the uh, Ukrainian side because these guys who are fighting and dying for their country, they're highly qualified engineers. Some of them have even been, you know, medical doctors who've seen their guys dying um, around them and they're getting taken out. And these are the people desperately needed thinking of the conference in London this week for rebuilding Ukraine. Mm. And the one thing about Ukraine that also people are adding, you've got to detoxify, you've got to get rid of the corruption, you've got to get rid of the overbearing power of Ukraine's oligarchs. And they still exist. Really? Mm. Gosh, what uh, a yeah. fascinating. complex situation, mm. isn't it? And as oh, no, a piece of cake. It was. Oh, <laughs> and as you said, you know, if we judge it from the, we the Western perspective, absolutely. we may not be seeing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely right. Gosh. Yeah. And, um, um, you're not Anne, you're Robert. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, we are going to change roles. It's yeah. one of those mornings. It is one of those <laughs> Thank mornings. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much Thanks indeed. For